Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today, we're gonna take a quick look at my favorite industry, that is the semiconductor market. Uh, today, ASML Holdings reported earnings, and this is a very important company. They provide equipments for the manufacturing of semiconductors. So it is very important to kind of understand what's happening to them because their events will trickle down to the semiconductor industry. We can see after reporting an, uh, earnings, the stock is up 2.71%. So in today's episode, we're gonna take a quick look at this awesome presentation that I have set up for you guys. Uh, if this is your first time here, make sure to hit the thumbs up, make sure to hit the subscribe button, check out the pin comment for free Discord, free newsletter, and a lot of great investing links. So let's get started. So right off the bat, ASML, quarter four revenue was about 4.986 billion euros. This is a European company, so we are gonna see it in euros. Quarter four revenue was up year over year, but was down quarter over quarter. I do believe to some extent it might be better to look at net bookings for this company net bookings was about 7.05 billion and that was up quarter over quarter and year over year so this is a quick overview right gross margins were 54.2 percent profit margins were 35.6 percent and cash flow from operations this quarter alone was 6.4 billion euros uh, and all of those are up quarter over quarter and year over year for quarter one the outlook revenue looks very low it's about 3.3 to 3.5 billion euros and this is remember quarter four they had somewhere around 5 billion euros. So the reason for the numbers, they do kind of share that information is there is some change in recognition, uh, revenue recognition uh, of what they're doing. And this is a way to kind of help them move shipment uh, products faster. So normally, like I mentioned, they create equipments. So when you create equipments, ASML does numerous tests. At the end, they also do an extensive amount of tests that take about three to four weeks. Then they ship it to customers and then once they ship it to customers at the customer's location they do even more tests they kind of repeat those tests they did before shipping them over so instead what they're gonna do is they're gonna make the product they're only gonna do some preliminary tests what they believe will show the biggest kind of defects if everything shows okay they're gonna ship it and then they're going to do the final test at the customer's locations. This is going to speed up time and it's also going to get the customers to get their equipment faster. Uh, but now they're going to have to wait till after that final test happens at the customer's location for them to recognize revenue so it's gonna kind of shift revenue a bit um, but i do believe it's gonna help out to the long term especially it, it but it mainly depends on how their testing is done previously if the the small test that they're doing before they ship can kind of tackle all the bugs uh then that would be great but if they start shipping and they start seeing a lot of defects and then they have to ship it back um that would not work well for them uh so that's something to be very very careful let's take a listen to today's sponsor i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video motley fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels you guys know I love finding new investing tools and resources to help me scout out new growth stocks. And right now I have a discount for one of my favorite services The Fool offers. Through the Motley Fool Stock Advisor services, you get access to a ton of expert stock picks. Every month you'll get two new picks that are aimed at growing your wealth and to help you realize your financial goals. Stock Advisor's average stock picks have done amazing returns. If growing your money is something you'd like to do more of this year, you can visit fool.com slash Jose Naharo or click on the link below for access to my special offer and decide if the stock advisor is right for you. Thanks again to The Motley Fool and now on to today's video. They do say for 2022, they expect the whole revenue growth to be around 20% growth. And this is similar numbers to what TSM kind of provided. TSM, if you guys remember last, uh, I, I did a earnings, I did a report on them. They expect the overall foundries market to grow close to 20% obviously they provide equipment to the foundry market so it kind of trickles up you guys see how that trickle effect ha happens and that 20 percent is similar to the numbers tsm gave so during their earnings presentation asml shared some amazing messages and this is uh, about the overall industry and this is what i enjoy looking at semiconductor uh presentations for they share they share value for the overall market. And they say that right now, global megatrends in the electronic industry supported by a highly profitable and fiercely innovative ecosystem 
are expected to continue to fuel growth across the semiconductor market. And this is one of my favorite things about the overall semiconductor industry is this is a market that cannot be still. You need to keep innovating every single, and some investors might consider that a risk, right? Because you might invest in a company that eventually might kind of slow down on innovation and can provide kind of low returns. But at the end of the day, this is a market that you have to keep providing great innovations to become a strong player. And that's what I, I enjoy investing in. ASML also kind of gave us their net system sales breakdown yearly. And we can see the two major products that kind of grow dictate this company's revenue are their EUV products and their R5 uh, products. The rest, like their metrology inspection, still make up a small portion. And all these make up a small portion. Those two are the biggest driver. We can see the biggest customers are located in Taiwan and South Korea. We know that's where most of the foundries are located at the moment. Number three is China with 16%. Uh, so this is a great growth. And we can see how it kind of changed. Uh, overall, total system sales has increased uh, in 2021 compared to 2020. The final slide I want to show you guys from their presentation is their capital return to shareholders. I think this is insane. Look how much mu we saw that company is grabbing a nice amount of cash flow from operations. Obviously, they're using it to improve their technology, but whatever they have extra, they're doing in form of capital return to shareholders. We can see dividend history. Uh, dividend has increased about 100% in compared to 2020. Uh, they did kind of do an interim dividend. Uh, they had a little bit extra cash that they wanted to get back to investors, it seemed. And that kind of caused dividend to be a 100% increase compared at the same time last year i do believe if 2022 continues to be a strong year like they expect investors will ex should expect should kind of get another interim dividend this year and now if we take a look at capital return look at 2021 they have such a strong share buyback program that they're going to continue to do again this is a company that in my opinion is using is innovating within their markets because they're providing new technologies they're improving new technologies uh and at the same time giving money back to shareholders so i'm really liking asml even though it's not in my portfolio uh some final things i wanted to mention first there was a fire earlier in january there seems to have been no real impact uh management believes that with the creative moves that they have done there should be then and that's the thing there should be should be is the real word there should be no impact to the overall output for them um, but who knows? We'll see, maybe, we maybe see some form of issues later on. They do believe that the biggest threat for ASML is the huge demand. And when I first read this, I'm like, these guys are some cocky people, right? They're like, it's more like when you say your strength is your biggest weakness or your weakness is your biggest strength. That's what they're saying. But it actually makes sense. Right now, there is such a huge demand for technologies that ASML provides that they are at full capacity. So there is no room for disturbance. Let's say there is another fire uh, that would hit that would hit the market dramatically if there's something wrong with the test if there's something wrong with the new way that they're shipping products if any of those cause disturbance it can be a real threat for the business and that itself is a big risk in my opinion and if we do see something with asml like that i do believe it can kind of affect stock prices and just the overall semiconductor market in kind of the long term, um, they do mention management believes that the market will continue to grow beyond 2022. And as a semiconductor investor, I'm happy to hear that. Obviously, they have to say some things like that, but they do believe the industry is expected to at least 2x to about $1 trillion by the end of the decade. And remember, like I mentioned, this is a very innovative market. So I do believe that could happen. Uh, I don't own ASML in my portfolio. And based on current kind of stock prices right now i'm not much of a technical but right now this would be a more of a mid dollar cost average i do like the price point where it's at right now around that 730 720s 740s i believe that would be a mid dollar cost average if i wanted to purchase obviously stock price vo uh, vo volatility can continue and prices can go lower but this is an overall company that shows some strong numbers if we take a quick look at asml um ev to ebitda forward ratios it's about 30.43 it's not as expensive as i thought it would be and that's impressive in my opinion especially with the huge growth company with the huge growth this company is seeing and i do believe these numbers are not kind of updated with the recent uh kind of guidance that they gave uh so asml i do believe they're not expensive even though their stock price is near all-time 
high levels. I do believe they don't look bad. This is to me a million dollar cost average. Again, I don't own it and I don't know if I plan to buy it anytime soon, but if it does take a major, major dip, this is a company I would gladly own. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day and see you next time.